could like to call me Douglas for certain cases. Yeah, well, yeah okay, if I'm cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doug, um, we're here to talk about um, your aphasia yes. and, and, and having had your stroke. When did you have your stroke? Um, it was in 2007. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And it was in March. It was in March. And ca can you remember back to just after that time, um, what what you felt like? What well, after, after the stroke? Yes. When soon, I had the stroke. soon after it. Soon after. Oh, um, I was I was out of conscious there for some time, right. like a month and a half, I think. But I didn't know. I had lots of imaginations here, dreaming. But I don't know the order. It could be one bit or the other. Then I woke up eventually, and I didn't know what was happening. Um, and I was very dizzy about it. Um, and I think I tried to talk about such things. But one, one understands, one knows one wants to do something, but it's not. You know, it's not appropriate. So you might say something, and therefore I think I probably said words that weren't appropriate at all. I was using the same bird, sorry, the same word for anything. So just <laughs> so repeating want, words, and you, you knew what you wanted, I wanted to say. To it, but I would use the same word for everything. <laughs> and what do you think? Um, how did you feel when that was going on then? Were you aware that you were doing that? Did you know that you were saying the wrong words? Uh, yes, because I was frustrated and not controlling with people about such things. Right. So I was aware about it. Yeah. But because I was ill, I was dizzy and disturbed and in a different place. Sure. I mean, it, would, it, wasn't just a, it wasn't just a problem of, war, war, of, of, of walking. No, not a, just a problem of talking. It was everything sure. at the same time. You were an, an ill man, you had. You had yes. And and then when when um, your health recovered a bit, um, what happened? What what helped you to improve your speech and language? What what do you think made a difference? And hmm. how you felt? What, well, I think personally, I managed to start getting a bit better for myself. A little bit. How? I think I was beginning to say things when I wanted to do it. And I was sometimes I was getting the right words, so I was communicating with people. But I understand that the visitors were still having a big problem of understanding what I was doing about it. Um, and it was quite some time after that. I'm trying to think. After another two or three months from there. I was then having a lady to help talking about it. Um, and she was, she had two, well, she was a nurse, but she was, she had some spare time. So she would come along and sit with me for a couple of hours. And I would, tr I would communicate with her, with the words, and she had the ability to actually understand what I was saying, which is a big challenge because my wife, my wife has, sorry, when I think of my wife being a problem, that was very difficult for her. And it still is quite difficult in a way. But the nurse here, first of all, she was patient and therefore she, she let me to talk. Uh, and she managed, if I, if I couldn't find the expression, she could actually, she was appropriate to get the word. She, she, she knew what you were Yes. Whereas saying my, she'd say the word for my, you. My wife has much greater difficulty to find, guess what the word is about it. Mm. Um, and so it's very yeah. good. Yeah. It's very fortunate to have a lady who could do to help. Yeah. So we spent there for perhaps a month of doing that, I think. So it's almost just like practice with oh, a patient yes, person the talking and, and, and talking. But also at that stage, I was physically doing things for myself. So I was able to, cooking, uh, manually doing cooking about such things. 
uh, I'm walking around. I think I used the Hoover. Uh, it's quite a, a, a different change. To, so I was able to physically to do things. If, if you had to give some advice to someone that had just had a stroke and had aphasia, yes. Okay, what, what, what would you say to them? <laughs> it's very difficult because I assume that people have the same sort of problem that I have. Right. And obviously a lot of people have different problems about it. Um, but I think if one can do it physically, and there are I understand that physically some people don't have the ability to do the sort of things at all. But if you can do something and it's difficult, I would suggest that what people do is they... I would say um, to look at things that you want to do. Think, um, and for me particularly, for looking for history, something which is appropriate, something you recognise for yourself, and then to actually to use words as much as you can about it. But it, I think the important thing is to concentrate on something which is historically something you like. If you have somebody coming on as a professional people trying to teach you about the thing, they don't really understand what entirely what you would do. So it's better for you to say what you want to do, to work on that thing yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's probably most important. I think the most the, the thing that they do for their best is looking at you and contacting you. How having a um, contaction. Conver contaction. Conversation. A conversation. Conversation. Okay. For doing that themselves. Um, and it's very interesting because there's Eric. Having a conversation with someone else that has aphasia, you mean? Yes, yeah. for them yeah. trying to, con to contact on the, the situation. Yeah. To communicate together. Yes, that is mm. one of the most important things mm. about it. Um, mm. But also the feeling that. In a sense, from the stroke, you um, you really want to get as much of the thing that you can do to other people. <laughs> Is that appropriate? <laughs>